I just thought I would give you a quick run through of the equipment that I usually use when we do scent work. So for the actual scent, what we're using at the moment is Napier's Gun Oil. Um, I think just, just a standard level one scent work in the UK scent that you use. But when I started up with Fausto, we just use like lavender oil, ginger oil, any essential oil you have at home. Um, when we first started off, I even think I used like vanilla essence that you can get in the baking section just in Tesco. So anything that smells and that's different from what you usually have in your household, just use it. You don't need to have this, but that's what we're going to use now for Tennessee to get started basically just right from the start. For like placing the scent, we've been using just regular cotton buds, Q-tips or which is not as absorbent, but it works fine as well. Just little pieces of cardboard from any cardboard you have in your house. It doesn't have to be that complicated. Uh, for the first thing that we're going to do with Tennessee is just classically conditioning her, associating the scent with something good, food in this case. So I've taken two lids from egg cartons so that they're going to be flat. So I've got two, the top one that I'm going to use have little holes in it. If you can see that. I'm just going to put that on top of this one with the scent in the bottom. I'm using quite a lot of scent just when we get started just to make sure she gets really good whiffs. I'm going to put that in between just so she can't actually directly access the scent. That's an issue that I had with, uh, with Faust at the start that he just tried to retrieve the scent or started chewing on it and things like that and you don't really want her scratching or mouthing or getting into a habit of pawing it at the start. Uh, this is really good tips that I got from Sandra who has Lothian dog training who's been helping us a lot. So yep, two any containers, top one needs to have holes in it, scent in the bottom one, a lot of scent to get started, put them together, hold them out and then just feed the dog its regular food on. Again just building that association scent, good stuff. Secondly, what we're going to do, also tips I got from Sandra, Lothian dog training again, shout out, uh, two yogurt pots. I had to cut them short just because her nose isn't that long, so she can't reach to the bottom otherwise. Uh, so I cut them both off and then just used duct tape just to make sure she, there are no sharp edges that she can cut or scratch herself on, because obviously that would be really counterproductive for when I want to build a good association for her. Again, this. Yep, this is the top one. Not sure if you can see, has little slits or holes in the bottom. Gonna put that on top of the other one. Same as before with egg cartons. I'm gonna put the scent wherever I put that. Here we go. Scent in the bottom one. Holy, holy yogurt pot on top of there. And then first step, feeding. Just in there, getting the dog used to putting the nose in and out. After that, making it more difficult, just going to present it, wait for her to put her nose in without any food, click and then reward her either by putting food in here or on the side, depends on what kind of placement seems to work best for her. Um, another tips, tip, tips, <laughs> to progress from there, just since we're talking about equipment, is using a little airtight container for when you actually start doing the searches. Something I did with Faust at the start that took a while before we figured out was just using the cotton bud directly on the floor or in the house or on furniture or whatever. And obviously it has the scent on it. It's gonna leave traces of the scent in all the places you, you put it or hide it. So every time you do a new search, there's still gonna be residual scent like all over the room where you where you hid the scent before. So a really good way to avoid that is just by using little airtight containers. I'm gonna use this one at the start just to make sure that she can't pick it up or try to swallow it, because uh, she's pretty mouthy. Uh, so just basically making sure that the actual scent that's inside, it has holes so she can smell it, but the actual scent that's inside is never in contact with the surface you put it on. So you can do, you can easily do, I don't know, 10 repetitions in a row without having the issue of the scent spreading in the area that you're working. Once she's good with that, plan is to move on to these. I don't know what they are, little test tube things. I got them from Sandra as well. Um, I'm sure if you search for some kind of test tube on Amazon, you can probably get them up. Yep. 
Uh, so this is what we're going to use next. Either open or closing them, depending on how good your dog is, how big area you're searching, wind, humidity, all that stuff. Just, you know, if you want to make it easy, keep it open, more difficult, close it. Um, but yeah, moving on to that in a while once I'm sure that she's not going to try to retrieve the scent or chew it or swallow it or anything like that. Again, preventing the scent from going on different places. So I hope that gave you a good idea of just some of the basic equipment that you can use when starting scent work. If you want to do it a little more difficult, if you want to do it in the easier way, just hid, hide, hid regular food, <laughs> hide regular food for your dog. Um, if you have any questions, then just send me a message or leave a comment. Thanks. Good. 